Okay, in this video we're going to fire up the Android TV Developer Unit ADT-1 for the very first time. So let's get to it. So I got this device for $143.50 and that was actually a good deal, believe it or not, because a lot of people are selling these devices for 250 300 350 crazy amounts of money. So I was fortunate enough to get this on auction and I was the highest bidder. So I got it for fair market value and $143.50 is on par with the Amazon Fire TV. So I figure that uh, I got a decent deal on it. I don't know exactly what price these are going to retail for when they hit the market but I do know that this version is just a developer only unit so even if I do end up paying a little bit more for it that's fine because it is a little bit more rare I'd like to see the device come in at about a hundred dollars again when you get into game controllers like this one has it might increase the price but who knows we'll have to wait and see so everything is hooked up and ready to go all I have to do is plug in the Android TV so let me do that right now. So there you go, you see the Android splash screen. And the light on the device itself is sort of going through rainbow colors, the light on the bottom of the device. And I'll give you a shot of that sometime in this video. So there we go. Welcome. English, Espanol, or Francaise. Of course, I'm speaking English, so let's see if we can control this with the game controller. So I'm just going to press the center button on the game controller, and hopefully it will communicate on some level with the Android TV. So the light on the bottom of the Android TV right now is mostly white with a little bit of red in there. And let's see... So far the controller is just blinking the lights and I think it just synced up because it stopped blinking and let's see if I can move. Yes, I can. Perfect. So I'm using the D-pad to move. You can hear that there. And uh, I'm going to use the, I believe it's the A button. Okay, I just signed into my home wireless network and it's connecting to Google. So this is Android TV System Update, downloading the latest update to the Android TV Developer Preview. It will be applied automatically when the download completes. And we're at about 40% uh, now. So I edited out where I signed into my home wireless network, but uh, everything works really nicely with the controller, and it is the A button that I use to confirm. So that's if you're if you're a gamer or used to gaming controllers, uh, the bottom button, the A button in this case, is the one that, uh, that selects things. So it's installing the update, and it's doing the countdown. you got three seconds left, and I'm assuming, yeah, it's powering off, and it will reboot. Get the Android splash screen there again, and getting the rainbow of colors of light under the box itself, which is actually pretty cool. And this should be familiar to those of you who have Android devices. You got the little Android there, and it's installing the system update, and you see the status bar under there. Okay, so you see the Android splash screen, and it's actually in a different font and much larger as the device boots up with the system update intact. You sort of see a heartbeat going with that logo as it's loading up. So we got a tone there. And here we go. Google. Sign in with your Google account to sync your movies, music, TV shows, and apps. So I'm going to sign in now. I actually have to turn the controller back on because when it booted up, or rebooted, it turned the controller off. So let's sign in. And let me put in my Google account, and I will join you on the other side of that. 
Okay, I put in my Google information and it gives me a little reminder here before I sign in and it says by signing in you are agreeing to the Google Terms of Service, Google Privacy Policy, and additional Terms of Service. So you can actually view those Terms of Services but uh, I'm not interested, I'm just going to sign in. So I'm going to do that right now by pressing the A button on the controller. And it was a success. Next up it says location. Let apps use Google's location. All right, it actually just dumped me back out as I was reading that. And uh, let's set this up again, I guess. So we're going to select English, network connected. I'm connecting again to Google here. And I wonder if it will ask me about the location services again. Okay, apparently today is not my lucky day because as you saw there, it kept dumping me back to the welcome screen where it wanted me to choose the language. And that went on for quite a while. I'd select the language, I'd confirm my Wi-Fi network, it would try to sign into Google, and then dump back into the language selection. So about after 10 or 15 times of that happening, I looked up how you actually reset the device. So you unplug the device, you hold the pairing button down as you plug the device back in, and then you pay attention to the light on the bottom of the device. It'll flash red, you have to keep holding the pairing button after you've plugged it back in, and it will flash red, and you have to wait until it stops flashing red, and then you can let go of the pairing button and then reset the device. So it reset the device, and it actually downloaded more things. So hopefully this is going to work. Now, strangely enough, at the same time, my camera got an error message on it. And I'm having problems with my camera with the focus. For some reason, the zoom is getting stuck on it. And once it happens, I have to let the camera rest. So right now, I'm filming on my backup camera. So needless to say, I've had enough problems for today. I just want things to go smoothly. These aren't the only mechanical issues I've had all day. I've spent a lot of today rebuilding a computer and working on one that is giving me problems. So electronics and me are just not in sync today. Now, before you make any judgments on the bugginess of this device, just keep in mind it is a developer unit. The official Android TV devices are not available for sale anywhere at retail right now. I'm sure once this hits the market, all the kinks will be worked out. So, here we go. It says, sign in with your Google account to sync your movies, music, TV shows, and apps. Now, I did this once before. Hopefully, I can do it successfully now. So, I'm going to sign in, and I'll join you on the other side of this. Okay. Now, we're back to the location thing. Hopefully, it doesn't dump me out of here. So, it says, location. Let apps use Google's location service to estimate your location faster. Anonymous location data will be collected and sent to Google. I'm going to skip this only because I know that I can turn it on at a later date if I'd like to. Setup complete. Enjoy. So, here we go. Hopefully this is going to work and we get to see the user interface on this device. So there we go. Prepping recommendations. So here we go. Very cool. As you can see, it's very early in the morning, 325, and I've had a very long day. So, up top it says search movies, TV, and more. So click to search. Let me click on that. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Okay. Um, what's going on here is there is no mic. And in order to use the mic, you're going to have to download an app on your Android device. So when I had problems with the device, I did a lot of reading up on it. And I found that if you want to use the voice search, you're going to need to use your Android device for that. And that's no problem. I have an Android tablet. I have an Android phone. And uh, I'm going to do a full review on this device. Uh, in a future video, so we will cover that. Right now, both of my Android devices are charging, unfortunately. So we're going to have to cover the voice search in the next video. But as you can see here, it says uh, it has some uh, selections here. This is uh, from Conan, which is a 
late night talk show here in the United States, and this is from YouTube. Uh, this is from, okay, it's changing, interestingly. It says uh, X-Men Days of Past, and that, I believe, is from the Google Play Store, as well as Sons of Anarchy. Then you get YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. So a lot of Google properties here being highlighted. So as you can see here, you have apps, YouTube, Google Play, Movies and TV. Then you have the Google Play Store. You have Netflix and games on Google Play. So let me sign into Netflix here, and let's see what's going on here. Now, from what I understand, this is running a Tegra 4 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and let me just sign into my Netflix account, and I'll join you on the other side of that. So this is the latest Netflix interface, which is nice to have on here. I have it on my Xbox 360, which I use in my attic as my main streamer up there, but it's nice to see on here because I do have the Amazon Fire TV and the Netflix interface on that is the older Netflix interface. Not a big deal, very useful, both of them, but uh, it's nice to see the newest interface here on this device here. So it seems pretty snappy as I move through the selections here, which is really nice. As I mentioned in the unboxing video, you know, when you get a TV or a DVD player, or in this case Blu-ray players, I don't know if DVD players offer smart functionality to them, but, um, you know, when you get a device, you keep them for a while, and, you know, my, my Blu-ray player is not the speediest as far as the Netflix interface goes, so it's nice to have a device that's, uh, you know, up to speed and modern as, a, as opposed to, uh, you know, something I bought a couple of years ago. So let's back out of this. I'm going to hit the home button on the uh, controller here. And so let's see what we have in the Google Play Store. But before I do that, I just wanted to mention that this device has Chromecast functionality, which is actually very cool. So I had to edit out a little bit there because it showed my email address, but this is the Google Play Store on Android TV. So up top here you have Android TV apps, TV remote games, gamepad games, and updates. So let's see, the Android TV apps are TED, Plex for Plex Pass, iHeartRadio, and Netflix. Let me actually put Plex on here. Let's see if it uh, costs anything. Plex Inc. Let's see. And it's installing. Okay, so I can open, uninstall, whatever. So we're going to get to that in a second, just back out of there. TV remote games. So you have Badland, Berserkle, and Ninja Hero Cats. And then the gamepad games Leo's Fortune, Wind Up Night. Anomaly, Tabletop Racing, Meltdown, Clark, Twin Robots, Soul Calibur. I used to love Soul Calibur. Let's see. Oh, it's 13 bucks. I don't love it that much. Let's back out of that. Um, I just want to get one of these games so I can try it out. I won't try it out in this video, but I will try it out in a future video. So, it's Tainted Keep. Four bucks. Well, let's see if we can find one that's free. Probably Leo's Fortune is free. No, that's four bucks. Wind Up Night 2 platformer. That sounds perfect. So here are all the uh, permissions here. And I'm just going to accept this. Wind Up Night 2 Robot Invader. High-end platforming gameplay in a beautiful 3D world. Your favorite clockwork automation is back with a bigger world, crazy new dot dot dot. So that's installing, and let's back out of here. I don't know if I canceled it or not. But, uh, no, okay. I was able to back out. I just wanted to see if uh, these things would download in the background. So, okay, there we go. Downloading there. And then updates here, Google Talkback. Click on that. 
Google Talkback is an accessibility service that helps blind and vision impaired users interact with their devices. Um, might as well update that. So there we go. So pretty basic, not a lot of apps in there right now. Uh, I would love to see HBO Go in here because I do use that. And uh, of course Plex is in there, so that's good. So let's back out of here and now we have a couple more apps, or at least one more app. Plex on the apps area here and uh, the games wind up night. So let's go down here to settings and let's see what we've got here. So you have the device settings here, the Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Display, Google Cast, System Sounds, Apps, Storage, About, System Update, and Factory Data Reset. Down here you have your preferences, date and time, language, keyboard, search, speech, accessibility, and developer options. Next up is remote and accessories. Gamepad, you can add a Bluetooth accessory. And then personal, location, security, and then this is my email address, which you can't see right now because I've locked it out. So hit the back button and notifications. Uh, okay, two applications updated. Wind up night downloaded. Okay, and one update needs approval. So I think I already did that, so let's back out of that. So in function, very much what you're used to if you have an Android device. But the layout is much, much different. So that's going to do it for this video. In my next video, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in using some of these things, such as the voice search. And uh, I will give you an update on the Netflix streaming and also the Plex streaming on this device. And um, I don't really have anything purchased from Google Play Movies, although I do believe I did have a free Transformer movie when I bought a Nexus 7 years ago. So I might be able to check that out on here as well. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.